the word for this year now the first service every first koinonia service is dedicated to expanding the prophetic word every year god gives us words to guide us according to times and seasons god is a god of times and seasons and we know that he does he's doing something every time and for us as a ministry he's decided to capture his dealings with us as a global family in prophetic words i know that prophetic words have largely been abused sadly across the body of christ sometimes people just bring it just as a ritual that doesn't really carry any power but let me tell you that for us as a ministry every prophetic word comes from a place of deep prayer and intercession and if and when believed and engaged produces wonder working results are we together amen so let's look at tonight's teaching Ephata, the ministry the mystery of open doors Ephata. Ephata is spelled e p h p h a t h a e p h p h a t h a Ephata, the mystery of open doors matthew chapter 7 please from verse 7 and 8 matthew 7 7 and 8 ask and it shall be given you seek and ye shall find let's read the last um the last sentence together ready knock and it shall be opened unto you verse 8 still reading together for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened say amen next scripture please revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8 we're examining the mystery of open doors and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write this thing saith he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of david he that openeth and no man shut it and shut it and no man open it verse 8 it says I know thy works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and not denied my name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the Lord gave us a prophetic word this year, and he said to us, it is the year of open doors. And um, every word from God demands that it must be believed, demands that it must be received, and demands that it must be engaged for any potent result to come out. Let me repeat myself again. Every word that comes from the Lord to the believer demands that, number one, it must be believed. Number two, it must be received number three it must be engaged it must be believed luke 1 45 blessed is she that believe for unto her there shall be a performance of those things that were told her from the lord it must be received mark eleven twenty four. what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have it and then it must be engaged with faith the bible says now there remaineth a rest for the people of god he said they heard the word just like we did you find that in hebrews 4 i believe that the word did not profit them not mixed with faith in them that heard it hallelujah so it is important for us to know that though every prophetic word must be believed must be received and must be engaged in order to profit the believer what are doors let's discuss the subject of doors what are doors it's important for us to understand what god has said and what god is saying two definitions very quickly number one a door is a an authorized system for access a door is an authorized system for access 
when we talk about doors, we're not just talking about wooden objects or metallic objects that are attached to walls like we have in architecture. Although we call that doors, but classically speaking, when we speak about doors, we're talking about authorized systems for access. Access to opportunities, access to levels and dimensions, access to movement. Hallelujah. Are we clear on that now? So doors are authorized systems for access. When you talk about doors, you are talking about access, authorized systems for access. I wrote something down here, still adding to the first definition. Doors control motion and movement. Doors control motion and movement. For instance, if a door were closed before you, it sustains the power and the ability to restrict your movement and to restrict your motion. So first definition, a door is an authorized system for access. The second definition, doors can also mean hindrances, limitations, and restrictions. Doors can also mean hindrances, limitations, and restrictions. So two definitions, that a door is an authorized system for access, but a door can also mean hindrances, limitations, and restrictions. Hallelujah. A few information about doors you may want to know. The first here is that doors can open and doors can close. Very simple but powerful information. Doors can open and doors can close. Depending on what is engaged, a door can be open and a door can close. A door that was once open can be closed and a door that was once closed can be open. There are many instances in scripture where doors were opened and doors were closed. Classically speaking in the Bible, you, when you read in Genesis 7, Genesis 8, the flood in the days of Noah, the Bible tells us that when it was time for the rain to come, God himself closed that door. Is that true? And there was rain up until we get to chapter 8, thereabout, and then the door was open again. So doors can open and doors can close. The second thing I want you to learn about doors is that doors can be circumstances and doors can be human entities and doors can be spirits. Doors can be circumstances. Doors can be human entities. Doors can be spirits. Is someone learning? Doors can be circumstances and situations you may want to add. Doors can be human entities and doors can be spirits. For instance, I think it was John chapter 10 and verse 7. Jesus himself said, I am the door. He didn't say he has access to the door. Jesus called himself the door. John 10, 7. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus calls himself the door. Hallelujah. Now, the third information I want you to learn very quickly about doors is that all doors are closed by default. Hmm. All doors are closed by default. Listen carefully. All doors, it does not matter what treasure is in them. All doors are closed by default. Whether as humans, whether as products, all doors are closed by default. Let's talk about closed doors. Closed doors. Hmm. Luke chapter 11, please. We'll read the first seven verses. I like the way Jesus guides and builds his disciples because he's able to draw stories from the circumstances around them to communicate 
um, lessons and to grant them spiritual intelligence. He's teaching on prayer now, but then I want us to read from verse 1, but the context begins from verse 5. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Pay attention now, verse 2. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Verse 3. It says, give us this day, or give us day by day our daily bread for... Forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Now the context starts and he said unto them, please look up, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? Follow the story now and say unto him, friend, lend me three loves. Verse 6. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Verse 7, and he said, he from within shall answer and say, listen carefully, trouble me not. Why? The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give you. Look at this powerful story. What you are looking for is available. But the distance between you and what you are looking for is a closed door. It says, do not trouble me. I know you have need, shame and reproach is imminent. And it's not like what you are looking for is out of reach. But the only trouble is that the door is now shut. You came at a point where the door was shut. I told you that doors can be closed. Let's look at a few things about closed doors. Let me add one more scripture. Matthew 25 from verse 8 to 10. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 8 to 10. Remember the story of the 10 virgins, five being wise, the other five being foolish. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lambs are gone out. Verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. He says, But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Verse 10. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. When they returned back, even though with oil, Having oil in your hand and a door shut still kept them outside. You would think that the presence of the oil should naturally remedy for a closed door. Please pay attention. Let's talk about closed doors a bit. Write a few things that I wrote down here. I hope God is speaking to someone. Number one, doors are closed to manage or restrict access until permission is granted that means not all closed doors are bad this is what i'm trying to explain don't just frown at closed doors like you will be learning not all closed doors are bad for instance generally speaking now doors are closed to manage or restrict access until permission is granted we have a lot of working people here, a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, and people in government. And generally, doors are closed so that access can be managed and restricted until permission is granted. You don't enter an office or a house or a door and just walk in. Even in heaven where there is no evil, there are doors. Because doors manage and restrict access are we together these are the positive side to close doors doors manage or restrict access because if access is not managed like my dearly beloved mentor would say abuse will always be inevitable so there has to be a system of restriction to access and doors provide that opportunity number two Closed or sealed doors increase the value of a product. Closed or sealed doors increase the value of a product. Is that true? Imagine with me, please look up. 
that you went to buy a product, maybe perfume or whatever it is, and you find it already open, or a beverage, and you find it open. Even if it was open for you, you are not going to buy it and you will not place value. The value that you place on that product is because you meet it closed and sealed. Is that true? Yeah. In fact, there are products that you will see disclaimers written there that if at, at the point of purchase, you find this product open, it says to discard or return back. Is that true? So, closed doors are not all negative. They increase the value of a product. In 2 Kings chapter 4, reading from verse 3 and 4, this was the story of the wife of the sons of the prophet. When she went to meet Elisha, he gave her a recommendation, verse 3. Then he said, go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. He said, borrow not a few, verse 4. And when thou art come in, he says, thou shalt shut the door upon you and upon your sons. You want to increase value. And he says, you will only do that by shutting the door. Hallelujah. There is no increase in value when doors are unnecessarily open. You have to shut the door. It was a recommendation that the prophet was given. That means let the people not see you while you are preparing. They will not place value on the product. Shut the door while you are pouring the oil. What they should see is the finished work. Even in building, when when architectural companies come to build, they fence that building first before they start building. Because if you leave the door open, you reveal the security architecture of that building. Is that true? So they put a fence around it because there will be a lift, maybe an underground house. Not all short, short or closed doors are dangerous. There are many times that doors are short to increase and maintain value. Is someone learning? Hmm. So close or seal doors increase the value of a product. Number three, the third thing you need to learn about closed doors is that generally doors, especially when closed, protect and preserve. Doors, closed doors can protect and preserve. You find that in Genesis chapter 7 from verse 13 to 16. The ark of Noah does protect and preserve. He said in the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. Reading to 16. He says they and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And every fowl after his kind, and every bird of every sort. 15. It says, And they went in unto Noah in the ark, two by two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. Verse 16. Let's read it together. Ready? One to read. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God has commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. It was God himself that closed that door because a flood was about to come and only the person who had a closed door would be preserved. The, the heavens gave their rain. The earth gave his rain. Only Noah in the ark that God himself closed that door preserved them. So closed doors can protect and preserve. Are we learning? Number four, now, this is the side of closed doors that we are here to deal with now. Closed doors can be a deliberate hindrance to put, a deliberate hindrance put up to hinder progress. Closed doors, having given you the positive side to closed doors, closed doors can be deliberate hindrances, I wrote here, put up to hinder progress. An example, prison doors. Prison doors are closed doors that are able to restrict progress. This is the kind of closed door that this prophetic word was designed to deal with. Closed doors can be deliberate hindrances 
put up to hinder progress. An example are the prison doors. Are we learning now? So that when you are rebuking closed doors, you know which closed door you are rebuking. Lest you rebuke what was supposed to preserve you, add value to you. You see that we, we are a people of spiritual intelligence. You don't just shout when you are saying every closed door. You mean every closed door that has been put as a system of restriction. Are we together now? Because closed doors can manage or restrict access. They can increase the value of a product. They can protect and they can preserve. But then they can be a deliberate hindrance put up to hinder progress. Now, let's look at how to open closed doors. Shaleka branda gatosiata. Light is coming to someone now. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. Do you know, revelation is so powerful. It can bail you out of ignorance in a moment and set you on course for a life of victory. While I was preparing this note, I had to just stop, rest my head and shout and say, God, 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 this God. Number one. How to open closed doors. Are you ready? The first key or the first um, mystery that is given to us from scripture. As far as opening closed doors is concerned. Is the use of the right keys. The first way we open closed doors. Is by using the right key or the right keys. Closed doors are opened by using the right keys. Please underline right keys. A wrong key does not open a closed door, even though it is a key. Hallelujah. There are many of us, who every house I presume has multiple doors. And sometimes every one of those doors would have a unique key. Is that true? The key that may open the main door may not open the kitchen door. So you can have a key, a correct key meant for another door. If it is the kitchen that you want to open, you must use the key that is meant for the kitchen. I think there has been a mix up of this, especially in the body of Christ. And you've heard me say it again and again. There is a mix of different keys believing that because they are divine keys, they will open every door. An example, using prayer and fasting alone as the ultimate key to prosperity and the manifestation of prosperity. It doesn't work that way. No. Prayer and fasting in addition to other things is what will guarantee the manifestation of the blessing of the Lord upon an individual. Prayer and fasting on its own does not take ignorance. Or an example is Bible study without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It will only end you to become a religious person with nothing potent to produce result. Or submitting to the ministry of the word and ignoring the ministry of prayer and fasting. No. Jesus himself, I've clarified this many times in this house. He calls himself the word and yet his life was invested in prayer. Even as he's seated at the throne of heaven now, he's not quoting scriptures, he's making intercession. That is the value he has for prayer, even though being the word. Are we together? So the first way we open closed doors in this kingdom is the use of the right keys. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7, please. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, we read that earlier, but let's just read again for emphasis. This thing saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. There's a separate teaching coming on that, so I'm not going to talk so much about that. The Bible says by that key he can open and no man can shut. And he can shut and no man can open. It takes more than desire for doors to be open. It takes the right key. Someone say the right key. Luke 11:52 and verse 52. 
Woe unto you lawyers. Jesus is speaking. For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. So keys there refer to a body of truth. A body of knowledge. It says ye entered not in yourself through that knowledge. And them that were entering you have hindered. So he was rebuking the scribes and the Pharisees. The doctors of the law at that time and he was telling them listen you have you have taken away the key of knowledge access to knowledge that means that knowledge is supposed to usher you into realms to open doors for you you didn't enter yourself and you have restricted those who desire to enter the right key in the name of Jesus my prayer for someone this year is that God will grant you grace to find the right key Please shout a believing amen. amen. That God will grant you grace to find the right key. Amen. Many of you have been holding keys. But could it be that the key you have been holding is not for the door you are looking for? And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. In most large houses, they put all their keys together or at least maybe one one each of the keys and they put it together in a bunch and keep it somewhere safe is that true yes so that you can have it within your reach if it's the main door you are opening you have it there if it's the kitchen door the bathroom door you have it there for most of us you have been given these keys but because of carelessness you scattered your keys like the bones in ezekiel's valley and you cannot construct it together to become something exceedingly great this is the year God is granting you grace to gather them together. Yeah. Hallelujah. The first way we open closed doors is through the use of the right keys. This talks of knowledge. This talks of understanding. This talks of faith. You need knowledge and you need understanding. It is my prayer and my determination this year to bring light like never before. Truth upon truth, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. To the end that God will grant us grace, that with light we will be able to rise. The Bible says that we are able to show the praises of him that has called us from darkness into his light. Hallelujah. Number two. How do we open closed doors? Are you ready? The second way according to scripture that closed doors are opened is by knocking. By knocking. Knocking here means obtaining help from men through mercy and favor. Don't forget this. The second way that closed doors are opened is by knocking. Every time you knock a door, it is because you do not have the power to open it yourself. If you have a key, you do not need anybody helping you. Are we together now? Once you have a key, you do not need anybody helping you. The key itself will open. In fact, sometimes you don't even need to speak. The moment there is a key, the door opens. But the moment you do not have a key and you need that door open, another system that God put is to knock. Because the one who opens has access to the door. But now you need entrance, but you do not have the key. Is someone learning now? Knocking. Knocking talks about obtaining help from men through the ministry of mercy and favor. We already looked at Matthew 7 from verse 7 to 8. The Bible says, knock and it shall be open to you. You are not the one who will open it. It shall be open to you. There are doors that need to be opened, but not by you directly. They must be open for you. The most important thing is that they are open so that you will enter. At such points, playing around with a key, around a door that you don't have authority over, will only waste your time. What you need to do is to knock. The Bible says in verse 8, For everyone that knocketh, it shall be opened. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is where the ministry of mercy and favor comes. There are doors you need opened by all means, but you may not have the spiritual capacity. You don't have the key, but there are people that have the key. What you need to do is to master the art of knocking. 
those who can knock will have many doors open that is not credited to their personal efforts there are people behind at the other side of that door they have access to it all you need to do is to learn how to knock is someone learning second corinthians 2 and verse 12 furthermore he said Paul was speaking now, giving them a story. I just picked a verse that I found interesting there. It says, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, it says, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. Who opened the door for him? The Lord. The door was open, but he never mentions using a key to open that door. He says, it was open unto me. In fact, one last scripture, Revelation 3 and verse 20, very popular scripture. Behold, I stand. Who is speaking here? Jesus standing at the door of your heart and knock because even though he's the creator of the ends of the earth when he created man he made you a free moral agent that even though he is God it becomes scripturally incorrect for him to budge into your life and he's patient enough if God knocks you must learn how to knock there are certain doors that you will need to hide your pride and knock this year there are doors of grace doors of power because it is only those who knock that will have that door open is someone learning not every door every door may respond to keys but you may not have the privilege of access to every key yet you need every door that should be open open so you must know how to knock to knock requires patience to knock requires persistence is someone learning now let's go to Luke 11 and finish up the scripture that we started now God is giving someone wisdom already. Matthew chapter, I mean Luke chapter 11 from verse 7. Now, remember our story? Where the guy began to knock and say, please help me with three loaf of bread. I want to give my friend. And the man said, trouble me not. The door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed. Are you seeing that that door was positively closed for the man and his children? But with respect to the one who needs help, that door needs to be opened. He said, I cannot rise and give thee. What did the man do? I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend yet because of his importunity the word importunity is the word persistence he said he will rise and give him as many he asked for three but he said you can even get more by knocking your intention was to get three loaf but knocking is so powerful it can give you more knocking does not only give you a job it can create a destiny for you Is someone learning? Knock to everyone that knocks. Matthew 7, 7 and 8, when you read Amplified, it says, ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. It says, knock and keep knocking. And the door will be open unto you. Is someone learning? Knocking talks of obtaining help from men. Listen. As far as the opening of doors are concerned, you will need the ministry of mercy and the ministry of favor. The ministry of mercy and the ministry of favor. There are many doors you will encounter in your life and your destiny that you may not have the key, yet that door needs to be opened. You will have to knock. If I come to your office, for instance, I will have to knock at the door and then you come and open is that true when you open it is your opening that gives me access that means I must pray for something to happen to your heart for that door to be opened the friend here said I know you are my friend but I'm sorry right now I'm in bed with my children my apologies go away and the man kept May God put it in the heart of someone this year to rise up and see to it that every closed door is open over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You heard some of the testimonies here. 
Let me tell you, I have taught you and I will keep teaching you till it enters your spirit. That all blessings come from God through men to men. To men. Believe me, men can be used by God to open doors. Doors, very strange doors of opportunity. May that be your testimony. Are you ready for number three? How do we open closed doors? The third is by supernatural power. The third way doors are open is by the ministry of warfare and power. The supernatural power of God. Because there are doors, especially demonic doors, that will not open except and unless force is engaged. Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang unto God and the prisoners heard them. There were many prisoners in that prison. Some were interested in going out. Others were interested in remaining there. Paul and Silas said, no way, we will not remain here. Verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake in a prison so that the foundations of the prison were shaken a key cannot do this one there are a key can quietly open the door but when it is supernatural power both the door the foundation of the house must know that it is god coming in the name of jesus i prophesy to someone it is not only keys that will open some doors the great power of god is about to swing open ancient doors in the name of jesus christ Give us that scripture. So that the foundations of the prison were, take, were shaken. When it is the power of God, the doors do not open one by one. He said, and all doors were open. No key, but power. Don't you think keys are the only ways doors are open? When the power of God comes, it may not be the time of the stirring of the water, but you will still say stand up. You don't need to wait once per year. There is a supernatural dimension to opening doors. There are times when keys fail. There are times when the hearts of men fail. At that time, resort to the one who can send an earthquake from heaven to the earth. It's not only a door that he opens. The Bible says the foundations of the prison. And immediately... When it is God, it does not take time. Immediately, immediately, not later, not next week, not next month. Immediately, hold on please. Please, ladies and gentlemen, think about this. I watch this. Sometimes, in my own boring way, my apologies. I just, you know, sometimes I'm watching videos. I like to watch videos of demolitions of houses large structures and then sometimes these these you know the 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 machines that squeeze metals and just break them and i i have never been i get so amazed that a car will be put in that machine and in less than one minute it will squeeze it like a rack i have seen many of you here construction engineers and you know that it can take three years, five years, ten years, thirty years to build a skyscraper. And in a moment, using explosives, you watch it come down. Everybody watch 9-11. In a moment, it came down. When it is God, he has no time to come key by key. The entire foundation must go down. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. We have seen what happens when doors are open. A key can only open one door at a time. Listen, if there are 10 doors, you will have to go and open one. There are doors that you have to turn them three times. And superior security doors like we have today, 
they use iris, fingerprints, all kinds of things. It will take a while. Many of you here are into security and logistics. You don't, if, if, you, are, if you, are, you go to the bulk room of a bank, for instance, you're not going to turn a key two times for it to be open. No. For some of you, your loved ones found the key, but the time it would take for that key to work, they died trying to open that door. It was a right key, but all the things to engage with respect to time. Notice the character of the power of God. They prayed and they sang. God never called the jailer. God never asked the strength of the foundation. Who designed it? That is none of his business. They prayed and they sang. And God said, clear the way. In, listen, listen. In Acts chapter 12, you see, when Peter was bound hand and feet, it was an angel that was sent. There was no earthquake. Prayers was made without season and an angel came. He opened the doors and they went out. But when God came, who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand? Who can stand against a king? No one can. And no one will. Hear me. Let me speak to someone. This year, your family is about to experience something. That those who have been bound. I'm speaking prophetically. Age long captivities that have tied people down in the name of Jesus. The mighty warrior, the terrible one will arise as a warrior that he is and the foundations of many families will be rattled. Everything that has not been planted by God must give way. When it is God, it must insist that all doors open. All doors. This is not a year to celebrate some doors and leave others. All doors. All doors. Mention some of the doors that must open. Thank God for the ones that opened last year. All doors. All doors. Someone is prophesying for one minute. All doors. All doors. All doors by the Spirit of the Living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A, a scripture just came to my spirit. I believe that should be Judges 16 and verse 3. Samson. Although it was not a very nice story, unfortunately. But the Bible says Samson removed the door of the gate. Look for it for us. Yes. At me, he says he laid at midnight. The Philistines were gathering round. He said, I will not only you want to fight me, I will show you the one who has strengthened me. I will not only open, the, I will remove the door. The Bible says he removed the doors of the gate of the city and climbed a hill and kept it and sat there. Now you are ready to pray. Psalm 24, verse 7. Lift up your heads. Not give me a key. This situation is not just about a key. Not where is my destiny helper. Lift up your heads. All ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory, hear me, hear me, please look up. Let me tell you what this means. There are doors that you try to enter and you try to use a key. Ordinarily it should open, but because there is a spirit behind it, even when you are using a key, it does not open. 
there are times that you knock and men should help you and because there is a spirit their hearts are hardened like pharaoh and they will not open the door to the job the door to that opportunity do you know what god does he says move let me be the one to enter because you see question when god comes as a savior he knocks but when he comes as a warrior he breaks understand this there is jesus the savior who will knock at the door of your heart gently but when he stands before obstacles i sense the power of god so strong in this place now lift up your heads ancient gates ancient gates ancient doors lift up your heads ancient doors the king of glory the king of glory the king of glory hallelujah listen we're about to pray pay attention now please look up so i have taught you that there are three biblical ways to open closed doors never forget this for the rest of your life number one is by the application of kingdom principles keys many doors will already be opened by the application of keys there are times that you may not need keys, but you need people who are the uh, other side of the door. The ministry of men, the ministry of mercy and favor. But let me tell you the truth. Most of the doors that represent defining moments in the lives of men are not an issue of key or men. They are issues of spirits. Spirits. Nobody has ever risen from this family like that. Let, let, let us be the protectors of this covenant. That anybody that must rise from this family must serve this idol. And if you now come and say you will serve the living God. That ah, in the name of Jesus. May the mighty warrior arise. Arise, arise in power. Arise, arise in grace. Arise, arise in glory. Hallelujah. Now, please show me the design of the prophetic word. Can you display the design, the cover design? You will tell me of these three, which one has opened the door that you are about to see. Then I will share with you the vision that led to this prophetic word and we'll pray. I was praying and preparing as I would always do to receive a prophetic word. Please pay attention now. And... I was caught up in the spirit and I had a vision. And in this vision, I had like a, you know, a door, giant door. And then I saw these ancient keys. Um, one time in London, I was given, a few people gave me a, a key just to represent the mysteries of the kingdom. So they gave me as a gift. You know, these Europeans value a lot of these things. We don't value them in Nigeria. Once it doesn't bring money directly, we don't care. <laughs> but they gave me this bunch of very old keys. I think they used maybe for castles or something. So they made it and gave me as a memorial to just know that, you know, custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom. So I have it somewhere. I just, I just keep it there. And, um, and so I saw a key like that and it opened the door. Then the second time, I did not see a key again. All I had was boom, like the door was hit. And I just saw light. Then I saw the word open doors. That's how I knew that God was speaking to us this year. That it will be the year of open doors. Let me tell you, if you have, if you have never seen a prophetic word come to pass, let this be the year you see it come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. When I called our people to design for the prophetic word, I insisted that certain things be captured in that design to reflect the vision that I saw. The key word for these open doors is all doors open. 
not just open doors all doors all doors all doors what does this mean let me tie this up now so that we'll pray listen carefully now you may sit for a moment so that when you rise next we rise to pray when you stand in front of a closed door i said when you stand in front of a closed door the first thing you need is discernment when you stand in front of a closed door the first thing you need is not action the first thing you need is discernment is this door closed for preservation closed to add value or is this a demonic door that is an impedance a hindrance to my progress it will guide you to be able to know what tool to use if the door was locked with keys then what you need will be keys to open it if there are men at the other side of the door then you will need to master the art of knocking but if there are spirit entities and covenants that have stood at the back of that door you see if you open a door with a key it can be closed again but when a door is broken your children and your children's children can pass there are many people listen if in a family of 20 or 30 people one person maneuvers his way and forces that door to open and it closes behind him you did not do much he said as for me and my house the blessing will always be for you and your house hallelujah as for me and my house please help those under the anointing it's for me and my house he says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. It is not just one person, I and everybody. When I was praying in the, my pre preparing, receiving this prophetic word for my own life, I prayed for every one of you in the spirit. You see, can you see two doors open? And you can see the Holy Spirit as a sign of the supernatural power of God. Are you seeing that it was so open that it's not only one person that passed? I'm not an artist, but I, I know when you see some things, you force it to be reflected there. It is not only one person. Question, when that demonic door called the Red Sea opened, how many people passed? Talk to me, please. How many people passed? There was not one covenant person who was left. The way the Red Sea opened should tell you it was a door, not a river. Rivers move, but this one opened heater and teeter on dry ground. The Red Sea was a mystery in the spirit. That was why Pharaoh had confidence that these guys cannot pass. Remember, the Nile is Egypt is a place of wizardry. They had covenants with serpents, they had covenants with the elements of creation. Moses knew that no kind of architecture will move the water to where now. It was a red sea for a reason but god said no that means there are many things you will see that look like doors but if god helps you to look you will find out they are not really doors they are just spirits masquerading as doors opened it heater and teeter when god opens a door it is enough for everybody everybody in the prison was not praying Everybody in the prison was not singing. But when God came, even those who provided they were in the vicinity, that means there are some of your family members. They may not even be born again. But when my God, I don't know about your own God, but when my God arises and shows up this year, there are doors that will open that your children's children will eat from. As many as are far off. In the name of Jesus Christ. All doors, including the one that is not your business, provided it came under the covering of your prayer. All doors, all doors. What is your business with your neighbors rising? All doors, all doors, all doors, financial doors. 
there are people who have struggled in ministry i'm saying this prophetically you have done everything with the integrity of heart and it looks like those doors are not opening help them i decree and declare by the mantle that came with this prophetic word in the name of jesus strange doors will begin to open for you hear me there are businesses that lost money last year lost opportunity last year you are saying god i do not even know how to start you don't need one or two doors the situation you are in now even if two doors open it may not be enough in the name of jesus let the all door anointing the all door anointing the all door anointing let it rest upon you please do not be careless with prophetic words this year not everybody is joking and playing games there are words that come from the bowel of prayer and contact with the spirit all doors all doors using all your money to treat your health because the devil wants to kill you don't keep quiet and die as if you are not a believer this door of health you must open up this year hear me this is the year you should not listen to all that nonsense and say it has always been like that there is power to change it it has always been like that that if you do not have a key prison doors don't open except that when god comes he rewrites rules again hallelujah all doors all doors this is what God has said and we believe now watch this it means therefore that in this year 2023 God is going to be principally dealing with us across three areas one access to the keys of the kingdom he's going to be teaching us to know how to access the keys of the kingdom according to Matthew 13 and verse 11 it says it has been given unto you to know the kingdom the mysteries of heaven Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 16 to 19 Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus and he cried unto God that he said I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayer 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him reading to 19 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened it says that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints verse 19 it says and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe to us word who believe to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power so all through this year every koinonia service will be a feast of light revelation and mysteries coming to empower you by the spirit number two favor this year god is going to be granting us access to understand the mysteries of favor seeing then that knocking will require a man at the other side of the door to open it revelations 3 9 please revelations 3 8 3 8 i know thy works he said behold i have said before thee so there are times that an open door can be set before you your assignment is to walk into it because you have received help he said haven't obtained help from the lord i continue unto this day I have said before you an open door no man because it was not a man that opened it a man cannot shut it i have said before you there are times that the door is closed he gives you keys to open but there are times he can set before you an open door by the help of god hallelujah and then of course number three this year god is going to be teaching our hands to war seeing then that there is a dimension of warfare and power give us psalm 144 and verse 1 that god is able to teach our hands to war and even our fingers to fight blessed be the lord my strength which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight this charge i give unto you my son timothy he says that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy there are words that are coming. You must gain mastery on how to war a good warfare in the spirit. 
because there are doors that will never open except by engaging the power of God. Psalm 66 and verse 3, say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you. Can I tell you the truth? There are certain things about your business, your life, your home, your children. It is going to take the ministry of warfare and power. Hallelujah. I prayed for a young man one time, very, you know, like a, I think a teenager or so. And this gentleman said, whenever it's time for exams, a very young boy, intelligent, even talking with him, you will know that this is a bright boy. But you see the results of that boy is not something that glorifies God at all. The failure is too bad. And the boy said every time he sits down, um, he just goes blank during exams. And until he writes nonsense or nothing at all, he will leave that place and start remembering everything. That child does not need counseling. What that child needs is power. Are we together? For many of us, hear me, there are many doors, even spiritual doors, doors of hearing, doors of seeing that have been closed over your life. Channels of my spirit, open up. I am with the Father, open up. No boundaries, no limits, open up. My hearing open up you are a door see listen hear me you can be standing close to the helper of your destiny and yet not know that between you and him is a door and be wondering why you are so close and yet nothing reaches you don't forget Luke 11 I am close to you just a door difference but it's already late the door is shut I cannot give you there are many of you who have been so close to people that in a moment can change your life. Sincerely speaking, they discuss the rising of others in your presence and say, um, I, will remember, I will do something about your issue. And yet you see God using them to lift others and you are there. Just because you are looking at a man does not mean there is no door. Doors can be invisible. Invisible does not mean unreal. Invisible just means beyond the scope of your optical eyes. In fact, most doors are invisible. Hallelujah. Most doors are invisible. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just seeing what looks like a coffin and I'm seeing like a dead corpse coming back to life. This is what I'm seeing. There is an anointing that is bringing resurrection to many families. That many things that have been buried down. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Everything that has died that should come back to life. Your joy, your peace, your prosperity. I command that it jacks back to life now. I command that it jacks back to life now. Hear me? Please listen to me. Help that lady, please. I want you to listen. We are, we are going to pray some serious prayer now. 
That's why I didn't take so much time to teach. Every city you see has doors. Just because you are in the city does not mean you are in there already. Please hear me. Preachers hear me. Business people hear me. You can be in Abuja for 10 years and in the spirit you are not yet there. That's why everything that is in that city does not answer to you. Why do you think there was a triumphant entry with Jesus? What was the significance? He said, blessed is he that comes. Was he not already there? Many of you who have been around northern states, when you are entering a northern state, there are usually like gates. They are not closed. But you will be mistaken to say they are not closed. Those things are not just architectural constructions. No. A city can reject you and you will know it because you are around what should bless you and it will never bless you. Please hear me. The same way the Bible says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places and yet you are on earth here and the Bible says it's a spiritual reality. Many of you physically you are in a place of abundance but in the realm of the spirit you are in the wilderness somewhere. That's why it does not matter even if someone gives you 10 million. By that mystery of closed doors something must happen for that money to vanish. You may not be careless but what is happening? Close doors. Close doors. How do I know that my doors are closed? Because there is no remembrance to bless you. There are many people like that. Every time it is time to bless and live, they are always forgotten. Hello, him, Madonna. story many years ago I was praying from my little room and then my ceiling disappears and then I see this object this creature looking like a dragon kind of bulgy eyes gigantic eyes the size of a man's head will be one of the eye of that creature and it had a tail that was alive having its own life independent of the creature with red fiery eyes and he was looking at me and said so you think you can bring god's people into abundance that was it hear me ladies and gentlemen people don't just remember you to bless you there are mysteries that you engage frowning your face and saying this person knows me and he has forgotten about me you are wasting your time you need to access by grace the keys there are many people who are in ministry under a close heaven. In business under a close heaven. Close everything. And you can be well-meaning and sincere and find out that gates don't open. There are regions that have gates. Professions have gates. Anointings have gates. That's why a man can pray for you. But you have not done what opened the gate. Or the door that leads to his anointing. You may even fall down and stand up. The truth is nothing will work. When it was time for Isaac to bless his sons. He needed something that opens the gates of his anointing. He said go and make me venison. Not anyone such as my soul loves. There are rules for that flow of power. The year of open doors. The year of of open doors opportunities unhindered now hear me i decided to just give a charge and not take time to teach we have a whole year to do that 
because we're getting into a serious prayer session now and please do not let the devil fool you this prayer is what will activate and release these anointings hallelujah please look up every day has a door 12 noon or 12 midnight is not what opens a day no sir no just because your clock tells you 11 59 p.m then the next minute you just say good morning physically bar but in the realm of the spirit you will be surprised many people are still in next year last year last month there is no forward movement i wish what i were telling you were a lie i would not come here and play games to such an intelligent people hmm. hallelujah it is not the passage of time that introduces next days remember doors midwife seasons doors midwife realms doors midwife faces and levels in life you can be at the same level because a door that should open has not been opened hallelujah praise the name of the lord when it was time for lazarus to come forth jesus said roll the stone that door that has sealed his resurrection because if the door does not open his resurrection will be useless open it and when they rolled the stone away he said lazarus now you come forth and then he said lose him and let him go i know you have business ideas but is the door open just because you bought a shop or a store or a mall does not mean you are in business there are doors why do you think they call certain people and even spirits gatekeepers what are they keeping before jesus started his ministry satan took him to a mountain and said listen you know better than i do look at the glories of the world that means the glories of the world were not controlled by what happened there the spirit that was in the madman in gadara was what controlled the economy of the gatherings the moment something happened to that man the business in gadara died immediately there are people who are rising it's not what they are selling there has been doors that were opened through covenants in the spirit hallelujah lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted O ye ancient doors listen to these stubborn gates and doors that the king of glory shall come in go to verse 8 it says who is this king of glory so don't think the doors will just open because you said it is a prophetic word even for jesus they ask a question who do you think you are ah, but i love the answer there is no discussion there go back to verse 8 the lord strong not the lord weak if it is the lord strong then it must be the believer strong if it is the lord mighty then it must be the believer mighty if the lord is mighty even in battle then the believer will be in battle too our assignment in warfare i have taught you is to establish that which is finished our assignment in warfare is not to create a battle and fight with physical strength our warfare in this kingdom has to do with establishing that which is finished and in the next few minutes you are not going to be praying for someone else yet this destiny you are going to flog it out this first service amen 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 Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Prophesy to your destiny.
the Lord mighty in battle. Let it be so that all doors open. Let it be so that I rise to realms unhindered. Let it be so in the name of Jesus that every closed door opens. Hear me. How do you know that a door has opened? Restraint is lifted. How do you know that a door has opened? Movement is now secured. The hindrance is taken away. Restrictions in ministry. Restrictions in your home. Restrictions in your finances. Restrictions even in your spirit walk. Can I tell you the truth? Hear me ladies and gentlemen. Just because God has spoken I told you. Does not mean it will happen. My Bible is full of many things that God said that did not come to pass. Because those he said it to thought he was joking. The Bible says there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Is that true? It says that in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your hearts like they did in the wilderness. Don't hear what God is saying and say nonsense. It may not happen. And don't make the foolish decision that the man in Samaria who the king leans upon said uh, even if the, the God will open the windows of heaven might this thing be for some of you in the place of prayer God will tell you that January will not come to an end until you are laughing already and you may not believe him because you look at your life surrounded with pain and shame and everything every time you are tempted to doubt remind yourself who spoke if it's just your neighbor or your friend who spoke or an unserious man of God who is not serious with the matters of the spirit then you may be afraid but if it's the God of heaven who spoke go and find out the things that he said that people believed and find out whether it did not come to pass he said by this time tomorrow we discussed this last year by this time tomorrow Hallelujah. We are going to engage prophecy in a few minutes. We are going to pray seriously. Do not let the devil distract you. It is in this prayer that your faith is released to be on course. Open doors all the way. You will know truly that there is a God that sits in heaven. Hallelujah. God may look deceptfully slow, but when he decides to rise... When God decides to rise for your family, your ministry, your life. This year, God is going to be placing glory and honor on people. You would see God place his hand. That man will be called Beulah and Hephzibah. It will be clear that the hand of God has rested upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed is he. Who comes in the name of our God? Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Go ahead and pray in the spirit for a minute or two. Shapako sata branda gebeleko shata fraska debelekos. Shaprade gebaratos kaprade shalakato branda sedebelakatos. 
Someone is praying all across the globe. Please pray. Following by way of television, internet, and all our social media platforms. Connect in the spirit right now. It's a year of open doors. Pray and say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe your word. Lord, I believe. I believe your word. Someone is praying. Declare that I believe. I believe your word. It shall be unto me according to your speakings. In the name of Jesus, it shall be unto me according to your word. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Now, I want you to begin to call every month by name and declare it open. Every month, a fata, January, be open. February, be open. Is someone praying? Open your mouth down to December. January, be open. In the name of Jesus. February, be open. March, be open. April, be open. May, be open. June, be open. July, be open. August, be open. September, be open. October, be open. November, be open. December, be open. 2023, be open. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone is praying. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. I decree and declare every month. Be open. Deliver that which is locked up within you. Hallelujah. Please help those under the anointing. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout this loud and clear. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that in this year of open doors, I prophesy over my life and destiny. All doors open. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Decree and declare. Mention every door you know. Command it to open. All doors. All doors. Te prekete pakatosh. Marital doors. Financial doors, ministerial doors, business doors, health doors, the door of your mind, the doors to your influence, the doors of kingdom service, the doors to greater anointing, the doors to revelation. Someone is praying, all doors open, all doors open. Open. All doors open. Someone is praying. All doors open. All doors open. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Shabrakata pakatos koto prende kaparekotos katia. 
Rafakata Parakatos, all doors, all doors, all doors. I insist, all doors. Someone insists in the place of prayer, all doors. Outside, all the overflows. Make sure you are praying. Zaria, make sure you are praying. Our global family, all who are connected, pray. All doors open. All doors open. All doors open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me please. Hear me. I'm going to lead you to make a declaration. The moment you make that declaration, you are at liberty if you want to turn to the east, the south, the west, because we are going to speak to all the, the prophetic regions, the four corner regions. He said, son of man, prophesy to the four winds. Not one wind, not one direction. Four is the number of balance and stability. You are going to declare whether it's the north, south, east, and west. In the name of Jesus, everywhere this door is, I prophesy to those directions, you must open. Say in Jesus' name. I decree and declare. Northern doors. Southern doors. Eastern doors. Western doors. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Be open. Now. Open your mouth and begin to speak. Declare over every region. Spiritually and geographically. Someone is stretching your hands. To the north. You are declaring by the spirit. Northern doors. Hear the word of the Lord. Southern doors. Hear the word of the Lord. Eastern doors. Hear the word of the Lord. Western doors. Even in the spirit. Ephata. Be open. Ephata. Be open. Ephata. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Prophesy. Be open. The four winds breathe upon this lane in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Let the winds be open. Let the doors be open. In Jesus' name I pray. Shout this. Say every spirit. Stand in my way. As a closed door. I decree and declare. The Lord rebuke you. Open your mouth and pray. Every spirit. Every hindrance that stands as a spirit, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you for a great door and an effectual is open up to me. But many are the adversaries. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Spirits of delay, backwardness, retrogression, failure at the edge of breakthrough. The Lord rebuke you. Hallelujah. 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 
you are going to prophesy over your hands and your feet listen you see the hands and the feet are two mysteries in the bible when they caught peter they did not tie his eyes they tied his hands and his feet because these are your instruments for movement and motion when you tie a man's hand and you tie a man's feet you have tied his ability to be strong and demonstrate strength and also his ability to make progress you are going to pray over the works of your hands and pray over your feet listen the bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord that you are not going to do one leg forward and 10 steps backward and you are going to pray whatever has made the works of your hands to keep recycling shame and pain you are going to curse it right now is someone ready to pray say in the name of jesus my hands you carry the blessing upon you my feet you carry the blessing upon you therefore i release you for my progress open your mouth and begin to pray your hands as a preacher as a businessman as a politician as a career person i prophesy my hands my feet will lead me to progress by the spirit of the living god i go forward not around i go forward i go forward every step being a greater one someone declare 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 Shapreketa doskata belekatosh kamprete ke pakato kata pakato skata eprakato shekete prende ke te proskete bata forward forward hallelujah 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 don't be tired of praying we're activating this grace in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray do you believe in prosperity because we are going to pray now and ask that the door that is restricting you from entering the place god has earmarked for your blessing believe me when i tell you until he says thou has caused men to ride upon our heads we we went through fire and through water but thou causes us to come into a wealthy place i can tell you when the blessing is not manifested in your life as prosperity it will interrupt many useful things in your life poverty can be a door that stops you from going forward many great things you want to build you want to make progress some of you want to partner with the house of god like never before but this demon spirit of poverty there are many conferences many outreaches many things to do for the kingdom there are many pastors in ministry they are limited they are owing they are in debt there are many business people some of you what you used to do before in terms of blessing others you no longer can do it that door must be cleared out of the way it takes more than a good heart to be a blessing remember your commitment number four that you will be a blessing this year believe me it takes resources you've heard me say the name of jesus is heavy it takes resources to lift it up for the nations to see if you are going to live a life of integrity and dignity and decorum especially as a minister of the gospel that you are not playing pranks and manipulating people you will need to access the supplies of heaven someone say in the name of jesus, name of jesus. financial doors, financial doors. Open. open open up your mouth and pray financial doors open
ideas, insights, access to light, doors of value open, doors of strategic relationships open, strategic relationships open, strategic relationships open, strategic relationships open. open. Someone is praying. Strategic relationships open. Financial doors open. Financial doors open. Hallelujah. Listen. Hear me, believers. Let me tell you the truth. Right from the one in this ministry. I'm not ashamed. I'm not one of those preachers that play games over. I hate poverty. It is clear. I will never like it. I will never teach it. I will never endorse it. I know the destructive effect of not having economic power to a people, to a territory, to a nation. You you embrace a life of poverty and mediocrity. No matter the spiritual explanation, you're on your way to not doing much for the kingdom. What we manage is lost and exiting Christ out of your pursuit for wealth. When your pursuit for wealth becomes a, an appetite for the gratification of the flesh, it compromises on your spiritual life, your passion for God, and it is not used as a tool to reveal him. Now we will frown at that. But not that resources, please don't. There are many of you, your children need to get out of some schools into other schools. If you mean well for their future. Are we together? You send your child to a school, he returns back as if he's a demon. Asking you questions that even as an adult you cannot sleep. But it takes resources. There are many people today who cannot lead many to Jesus. Because the resources are not there. I vowed a vow that I will never lead the people who are only spiritual. I believe in the power of influence. And you cannot be around the corridors of influence being poor. Settle it once and for all that poverty is of the devil. If you love Jesus and you love his purposes, you will embrace the blessings of the Lord. We are very outspoken about Jesus being exalted above everything. But please hear me, Africa. Let's be delivered from this demon that has kept us and wrapped up through the guise of religion to keep people poor. And then at the same time, advocating prosperity from a a standpoint that does not glorify Jesus, a standpoint that is a marketing of the flesh, that leads people to stealing, killing, and destroying, all to prove that their faith is working. This is not what I'm saying. That is absolute nonsense. We are teaching wealth and increase with a heart that is stayed on God and prosperity in your hand that has a mission. This is what we are advocating. But as for poverty, you will not find it here till Jesus comes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayer points. Are you tired? Please. You are going to pray that the doors of strategic and prophetic relationships be opened. Listen, listen, listen. In Luke 11, when the man was in trouble, he went to his friend's house. You don't go to an enemy's house to ask for help. That means you have to first have a friend before that friend can help you. Is that true? There are many of us who are suffering alone. As if you were exempted from any from the death, you know, the sacrifice of Jesus, simply because you have not mastered the art of trusting great and valuable relationships. This is the year where God has to connect you strategically to people. All blessings come from God through men to men. My friend. I have had some visitors, even though it's late. Please, can you bend over backwards for my sake? There is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Let me tell you, we live in days now where it is only God that can bring men to you. By the time you use your eyes and your brain, you are going to spend your life recycling pain. You need to pray and say, Father, I don't know what door is closing 
my strategic relationships that includes destiny helpers and i've taught you that there are four kinds of destiny helpers never forget number one divine connectors number two men and women of influence number three gifted men number four burden bearers you need these four people in your life say in the name of jesus shout it again say in the name of jesus father i decree and I declare that the doors of strategic destiny relationships be open up to me. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Someone is praying. Strategic relationships. Strategic relationships. Business relationships, ministry relationships, marital relationships, career relationships. Someone pray. There are relationships that if and when introduced to your life can become the ladder that elevates you to heights unimagined. When Jonah entered a boat, people lost their properties and almost lost their lives. When Jesus entered a boat, they were preserved. Pray. Doors of relationships be open. Doors of relationships be open. Strategic relationships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have one more prayer, but it just occurred to me now that when we pray that one prayer, I'll add one more. We have to pray for Nigeria. We have to pray for Nigeria. Hallelujah. Growing up, we were made to sing the national anthem and the national pledge. And we said many powerful things in those anthems that burnt in our hearts. Today, we have many people who do not understand the value and the power of nationhood. Thank God for very visionary leaders and people who are, you know, making these great contributions to help build a sense of leadership and decorum. It is the assignment, listen to me, it is the assignment of the church to pray that any nation they find themselves is a pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We are going to pray. Elections are by the corner. We are only weeks away. And as it has been before now, every time is the moment of election, you find deaths, all kinds of things. I don't care who comes into power. If people die, it's not worth it. We have to first pray that God will preserve lives. Nobody who comes into power has the power to bring, to bring the breadwinner of a woman whose son, if the woman, the widow at Nain had lost her husband and now her only son had died. She didn't care whether it was Jesus who was coming, she was mourning until Jesus came and solved her problem. Listen to me. We have, we hopefully by the miracle service will take more time to pray, but the, I don't, do politics, I don't do partisan politics. There are people in every party in this in Koinonia. And fatherhood is your father to everybody. I've prayed for people across every party, even some I don't even know they existed. I still prayed. That's my job. Are we together now? But I will tell you this. Listen carefully. Listen carefully, please. We are going to pray. We have to pray for three things. Number one, that God will help us and that his will will be done for this nation. We are tired of a lot of rubbish and nonsense in this nation. Are we together? Number two, this is my personal observation, and I'm saying this to the body of Christ. Our emphasis seems to have been only on presidency. We are making a big mistake. No, there is no single president without the support of visionary governors, house members who can do well. That the illusion that it doesn't matter who comes into power, Nigeria will magically change is a joke. 
Nigeria is a democracy, it's a composite. There are 774 local governments, every one of them manned by leaders. And I can tell you, even if Lot is a good man, if he's surrounded by a place like Sodom and Gomorrah, he will still be ineffective. So the prayer, our attention seems to be on only the presidency. And I understand the dynamics of politics, I'm a Nigerian. But then we must extend our prayer to all the 36 states, all the senatorial zones, the, you know, the local governments and all of that, down to the councillor. If a councillor is a thief, he has contributed to the, pro the trouble in this, in this nation. Don't say what he stole is small. Stealing is still stealing. Are we together? Yes. Now, I'm saying this on air and I'm being very careful. I'm not, I have profound respect for the body of Christ and all the voices across the body of Christ, but I want you to listen to this. Please listen. And there's a reason why I'm saying this. I've seen many things about the election. Ethically, I don't come out to just, I respect God, I respect this ministry, and I respect myself too. Are we together? But I can tell you, there are two warnings, and I want you to quote me. I saw this in a vision. Media houses, be careful. This is one of the things I saw in my vision. I've prayed over it, but I saw serious problem coming because of mismanagement of commun effective communication across media houses, both social media and this. Let us be careful, and my encouragement to media people is act with no prejudices and biases and with the highest level of professionalism um, available for the sake of the citizens. I believe that people have their personal bi biases and, and, and everybody is allowed to do so, but there are mistakes that the media has been making for a long time and it's not brought a national repercussion, but I fear that if we do not take out time and those who head media houses, if there are any here, I know we have one or two, it's my word of caution lovingly to you and then across the body of Christ. Media houses, let us be careful because what I saw was a problem that evolved from media. Praise God. Us is to pray, but media, we have to be careful what we report. I believe there are systems and structures that govern mass communication. And as much as possible, I'm lending my voice on behalf of many who mean well for this nation to see that we do the needful with wisdom and intelligence. And that also means that those who man several social media platforms, whether personal or corporate, we must be able to fear God and love this nation more than the ability to drive traffic to our personal pages. Don't just sell conflict and sell nonsense because you are desperate for traffic and you do not care the repercussion that comes from people. Are we together? If you cause somebody pain and you make gain from it, you will not sleep well. It's a law. Are we together? So I'm saying this, I, I owe it to make my own contribution as much as God has granted grace. Authority has jurisdiction. We have fathers of faith in this nation. And I'm a man of God, but we have been trained enough to have spiritual intelligence. There are things that is not us that will speak. The fathers have a voice that is greater than us. Let them do the speaking. Us as sons is to make our own contribution as much as possible. And this is something men of God need to learn. I'm saying it to especially my generation of men of God. Don't think just because you saw and heard, you come and stand and speak. In every house, there is authority structure. Even among the demons, it was one person who spoke on behalf of the rest. Let's behave ourselves in the body of Christ so we do not make a fool out of the anointing. Now we owe a duty, everybody owes a duty to communicate whatever he heard and saw. But when you are speaking, I told you that influence is a very delicate commodity. You can use it to destroy people. Let us try, let's show the body of Christ and our nation that as men of God we were trained. Let's not come out like people from the wilderness with no decorum. It is not everything you see that you say. There are, the Bible says Mary kept these things to herself. The ability to keep things because according to scripture, it says a word spoken in due season. There is a due season for every word. 
So I'm encouraging you, respectfully speaking, fellow colleagues, you know, and, and different co-laborers in the vineyard, let us manage especially communication of prophecies. I by no means devalue or I'll bring disdain to any man of God communicating any prophetic word, no. I am for the body of Christ. I hold every man of God as much as God grants grace in the esteem that is due their grace and the anointing. But this, I am saying it that we need to learn. Let us be contributors to nation building and not destroyed because of the, the itch to show we are accurate. The desire to have a nation that is built with intelligence and godliness should be greater than a man of God trying to show that he is great. Are we together? Let's pray for Nigeria. Please rise up on your feet. Mm. Say, Father. Father. One more time. Say, Father. Father. We, decree we decree and declare over Nigeria. Over Nigeria. We, declare peace. we declare peace. We declare tranquility. We declare and we declare that the election will be violence free in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray peace tranquility violence free election that if there are any plans for bloodshed to waste lives and destinies we pray in the name of Jesus that the blood of Jesus will speak against demonic forces that may want to work against the well-being of Nigerians. We pray for all Nigerians, Christians, Muslims, traditionalists. In the name of Jesus, we pray all together. There must be peace in this nation. And as touching the election, we declare that the purposes of God will be established over our nation. We desire progress. We desire advancement in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Pray for the presidential election. Pray for the gubernatorial election. Pray for the Senate. Pray for the House of Assembly. You know, counsel us all of the, the tears of government. Let's pray that God himself will bring people into this nation on seat and on board that will drive this nation to a place of prosperity, unity, peace and progress. Like our national anthem says, that the labor of our heroes past should not be in vain. Free from violence, we pray and we declare over the six geopolitical zones there must be peace in this nation. No bloodshed, no killing, no violence, no destruction of lives and property. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now the last prayer point, we are going to pray for Koinonia. This is a ministry that we are all part of. This is not one man's ministry and we're participating, no. Koinonia is everybody's business and everybody's concern. Hallelujah. I told you that in this ministry there are no fans. Uh -uh. Fans don't have an inheritance. It is people who connect. We may be far and wide across the many nations and continents, but love, covenant, and understanding has bound us together as a global family. While it is true that we are sent to the body of Christ, but it is fair that we look inwards and pray for this, our Jerusalem. You are going to pray for Koinonia right now, whether you are watching from Europe, you are watching from America, from across Africa. This is a gift that God gave to the nations, even at such a time as this. We are going to pray and cry. Father, the, the fire of revival, salvation, transformation, miracles, signs and wonders, it will never go down in this ministry. Open your mouth and please pray. Pray like you are praying for yourself. Pray like you are praying for your children. Pray like you are praying for that which God committed to your hands. You are part of this vision. 
make sure you pray father high level spirituality this will be a place where spiritual men are made mentored taught doctrine guided by the spirit this is a ministry that will continue to function by the influence of the spirit this is Bethel the place of bread the place of the word this remains a place of excellence a place of character in the name of Jesus a place of the manifestation of the power of God in unprecedented dimensions to heal to deliver to set free in the name of Jesus the fire of revival from this house will engulf the nations of the earth and we declare all the meetings this year the koinonia meetings the apostolic and prophetic meetings across this nation across the african nations and the continents of the earth in the name of jesus there are moments of encounter moments of salvation moments of transformation we will bring healing to governments healing to nations by the power of the holy spirit pray over the teachings that in the name of Jesus they are anointed afresh the teachings will mentor kings the teaching will mentor nations the teachings will be tools for revival tools for healing transformation many will come to Jesus through these teachings pray for all the sons and daughters in ministry connected to this vision in the name of Jesus they are excelling in the name of Jesus they are excelling pray for all the fathers that bless and speak over this ministry in the name of Jesus the Lord will keep and preserve them for our sake to keep speaking over our lives as we rise in the name of Jesus Christ pray for all the businesses in this ministry they will not fail pray for all the organizations in this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ Jesus revealed Jesus glorified in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Jesus spoke to Peter and said thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church he says and the gates of hell shall not prevail we have prayed for koinonia the meaning of that is that everything in your life because you are part of this vision everything must answer to that prayer Amen. koinonia cannot go up and you go down koinonia cannot go forward and you go backward i decree and declare in the name of jesus we all rise together in the name of jesus we all shine together in the name of jesus we all reveal jesus together for in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So I welcome you to 2023, the year of open doors. In Jesus' name. Please stand, everybody. Please stand. I'm going to make an altar call. Then I'm going to bring two very important announcements that I want us to please listen to and then we're done for the service please be patient this is the year that i want you to minimize i know that there are crowds of people and one service is approaching the end many people want to rush to reach for cars and the rest but just be patient we're mindful of you and for a few minutes it is important to do this our number one assignment is to see that we bring many to righteousness there are people here here at this first koinonia service 2023 this year of open doors the first door god is opening for you is the door to encounter jesus in fact jesus said this about himself he said i am the door to the sheep someone came to church tonight crying and saying apostle i don't want to leave the way i came i confess that i have not made jesus my lord and savior and for someone you are saying i remember getting born again but as it is right now my life is not intact with Jesus and I want to start on a good note. You may be inside this auditorium, all the overflows to the basement outside, or maybe following online from across 
Zaria and any center, you can't believe how many viewing centers people have created from their homes and from several, there are churches, there are groups that just put viewing centers to air koinonia. For all of those people, may God bless you and honor you for helping people to experience this. Now, I want to make this call very quickly. I'll count one to five. Wherever you are, you need Jesus. There's no point hiding. There is no waiting for someone to be the first to come out. This is an opportunity. Remember, you can reject an open door. Don't make the mistake of the five virgins. They wasted time, and by the time they would come, the door was closed. There is hope to him that is alive. And now Jesus is calling you. Wherever you are, as I count one to five, very boldly, I want you to leave your seat and come and stand right in front here. One. Koinonia, give them a, God, a good God bless you as they come. 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 Two. Come. Don't say someone is looking at me. There's none of their business. This is between you and Jesus. Come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Remember Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, that I will be ashamed of you before my father. This is a house and a family that loves you so passionately. Come. Three. If you are coming, please rush. Please rush very quickly. All those who are coming from the various overflows, you may move to your LED screens for sake of time. And for those who are making this decision, those in Zaria, you can move to the front of the stage and across the viewing centers around. It's possible to indicate by lifting your hand or even just coming to, you know, the front of your TV screen or whatever it is that you're using as a platform to view. Jesus wants to give you a new beginning. For as long as I'm alive and for as long as this ministry remains, we will never compromise on leading and helping people experience Jesus. Thank you very much for all of you who have come. Thank you for this noble decision. I salute you young and old for the courage to stand before Jesus and to make this decision. He said, ye must be born again. May I please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender unto Jesus and say these words after me. You're joining them. Please join them very quickly as we pray. Say, Lord Jesus. I see a few people coming. Let me give you five or six seconds. Please rush quickly, quickly, quickly join them. God bless you. Now, I'll repeat the prayer so we'll catch up. But let me just make a general announcement. Next time when we make an altar call, please for all those who are coming, do well to pick your bags, your Bibles, and everything you came to church with for the sake of uh, the security of your property so that you don't return back and find valuables missing. For those who are in front here and all who are connecting, please lift your right hand again. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I am saved. I am a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you because no man can come to you except you draw him to yourself. You have drawn these ones and they have responded. Based on the integrity of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven. And I decree and declare unto you that a new start, a new beginning starts for you tonight. The power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. You will go from glory to glory, grace to grace. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. Let me please request that you move to my right. You will see a group of counselors waving their hands at you. Let's celebrate them. They will have a word with you very, very quickly. And then you will be back. This is the best you can do, Koinonia. Celebrate them very quickly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, thank you. We have begun. It will only be from glory to glory. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. For everyone who has come here and those connected, I declare the blessing of this open door rest upon you. It will speak over your life. Even before next week, it will be clear that many doors have started opening. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.